Good morning. Welcome to the eight. Happy Sunday morning. I'm so happy to see everybody here today. Okay, so the church and women. Um, disclaimer I don't want all the guys to check out right now, okay, because this is not only for women. Okay, we all have women in our lives, whether it's your mom, your wife, your sister, your daughter, a co worker, we all encounter women. Okay, and I want us to understand the honor that God gives women, and I don't want us to look at women any differently, and especially when it comes to service. So I'm hoping over the next three weeks we'll kind of see what the church's view is on women and how women can be incorporated into the church, especially the service of the church. So, about the title, let's talk about that right now. So, it's funny because I had a graphic person, I have people that are going to be dealing with YouTube, and I told them, I said, the question mark is very, very important here. So, it's not the church has a women problem, it's the church has a women problem, question mark. So, let's talk about that. Um, does the church have a woman problem? And I'm going to answer that right now. Absolutely not. Okay? Absolutely not. The church has a humanity problem. And that's a series all in and of itself. Okay? So does the church have a woman problem? No. The church has a humanity problem. But I, I want us to focus on women. Okay? Let's focus on how women have been esteemed and honored over the years um, in the church. So, since we now know that there is no woman problem, let's talk about equality right away. We are all equal in dignity and honor in the sight of God. But, we have different roles and functions. Okay, just like in our body, I can't say... I really, really love what the brain does. You know what? I want to have two brains and forget about the heart. Or I really, really like what my heart does. I want to just have two hearts and forget about the brain. It doesn't work that way. So they're both equal in their importance, but they cannot be equal in their role. They cannot be equal in the function that they do in the body. They're both as equally important. I need both, but I can't say that I can't say one should be able to do what the other one does. Okay, so the problem is when we measure the level of dignity and honor based on the role and the function. That's when the issue comes in. For example, I can't say being a deacon is more honorable than serving as a usher. Or I can't say being a servant is more honorable than those that serve in the kitchen. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't work like that, okay? We are all equal in the sight of God, but we have different roles. Depending on our abilities, depending on our talents, we all have different roles and functions. So this mentality of us putting the, 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 on, the honor and the dignity on the role, this is a, this is a mentality that goes against how God sees us. Another example, men can't have babies. Like no matter how much they say, I really, really want to have a baby, even though I don't know why you would say that, but even though they would say, I really, really, really want to have a baby, it's not going to happen. It's not their role. It's not their function. So that's just a small example. An example that shows that our ancient Orthodox Church recognizes this same equality that we're talking about is in the hymn of the intercessions. So we take the intercessions of the saints. We ask for them to intercede for us before the throne of God. So there is something called the hymn of the intercessions that we um, sing at the beginning of the liturgy of the word. And right now, we are singing an alternate version of it for the resurrection. And this is one of the, this is one of the, the verses that are in, that's in that hymn. Through the prayers of the righteous and perfect men, 
Joseph and Nicodemus and St. Mary Magdalene. So men here is humans. It's not men as in male. Because here we see the inclusion of men and female. Male and female. We see Joseph and Nicodemus and St. Mary Magdalene. So we are asking for their intercession. The righteous and perfect men. Male and female. And so even here in our hymns we see the inclusion of men and women. And we, so we see the equality here even in this small hymn that we sing every Sunday. Even further than equality, even further than just us being equal, one gender does not exist without the other gender, okay? Let's see what St. Paul told the Corinthians. By the way, St. Paul, one of the greatest missionaries to ever walk the earth, he told the Corinthians in 1 Corinthians 11, nevertheless, neither is man independent of woman, nor woman independent of man in the Lord. For as woman comes from, came from man, even so man also comes from woman. But all things are from God. So we know women, from the very beginning, Eve came from Adam. But today, you, there will be no more men if women are no longer giving birth to men. So both genders exist, cannot exist without the other. In the Lord is very key here because we have to constantly remind ourselves, both male and female were made by God and we exist to fulfill the different roles that we have that are both significantly as important. Did you know that there are even roles in the Holy Trinity. So when we're talking about the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one in essence, there is even roles in the divinity. Now, when all things are made subject to him, God the Father, then the Son himself will also be subject to him, God the Father, who put all things under him, God the Son, that God may be all in all. So there are, we see roles here in the, the Trinity. Another example. But I want you to know that the head of every man is Christ, the head of woman is man, and the head of Christ is God. Does this mean that one person of the Trinity is less or more than the other? Absolutely not but they each have their role. So they are one in essence, one in dignity, one in honor, but they each have their own role, even in the Trinity. <clears throat> so it's okay for us to have different roles. It's okay for us to say, this is a woman's role. This is a man's role. There is nothing wrong with that because it does not take away our equality and it does not take away our, the way God values us values us in his sight. So I'm not going to stand here for the next three weeks and tell you how we can put m women in men's positions and men in women's positions. That's not the point. The point is to decipher what the role is of a woman, especially in the church. Stick to that role and do it pridefully do it with pride this is my role and be and and do it with honor do it with dignity so what is a woman's role a woman is the nucleus of the cell that's called family or on a larger scale the nucleus of society okay have you ever noticed for those of you who have a wife, when the wife is not in a good mood, everybody's not in a good mood. <laughs> even the kids, like even the kids feel it. Like I have a, an 11 month old and the days that she is the most fussy, I like, I have to like stop and say, well, I wasn't in a good mood today. And, and she felt that. So why is that? 
because the woman is the nucleus or the thermometer, if you would. Yes. So here we see it, it, in this verse, even it says, the, qu the question is, if the woman is the nucleus, what is the role of the man? How do you see the man? So here, here we see, like here, for example, the head of the woman is the man. So f just for the sake of, so when we're talking about the nucleus, we're not talking about her being the head. We're talking about her keeping it together keeping the family together. We're not talking about her being, taking the place of the man. Does that make sense? Okay. All right, so, so, so that, that just goes to show you what import, the, the importance of the woman even just in the dynamic of the family. There are some things that I've read during um, the preparation period of this talk that I just don't want to mess up. So I'm just going to copy and paste. I'm going to read it to you exactly how I read it. So this quote says, above all, the Lord has called women to be the creator of the little church, the family, to give life and upbringing to children, to be concerned with the continuance of the human race. Just as without wo woman, the human race cannot continue, in the same way, without her labors, prayers, and love, it would not be possible for life to continue in the Christian church. So just like you serve in your families, that same service is needed in the church. Just like you raise up your children in your family, the, the church, the children of the church are, are ready for a woman to bring them along as well. Okay, and we'll talk about that a little bit more. So why is this such an important role for the woman to, to, to really focus on the family, to focus on the next generation, to focus on the children? Let's see what St. John Chrysostom says. This is a fourth century bishop. So in the fourth century, I don't think they were esteeming women so highly. But St. John comes in and says, I'm going to talk directly to the women. And this is what he tells them. Let everything take second place to our care of our children, our bringing them up to the discipline and instruction of the Lord. If from the beginning we teach them to love true wisdom, they will have more wealth and glory than riches can ever provide. So we, we need to bring our children up to be successful, I agree, and to have a future but what is going to sustain them and what is going to ultimately bring them to the kingdom of God, which is our ultimate goal. And that is to bring them up and teach them to love true wisdom. From the beginning, here he made it very clear. If from the beginning, from when they're little, to teach them. Why? Because the next generation is going to be here after you and I are gone. And our number one goal is to add to the kingdom of God, whether that be our own children or our spiritual children. You don't have to have your own children. So I hope we're clear on what the woman's role is. So your role is the family, the children of the next generation. And like I said, whether it be your own children or your spiritual children or a group of children that you're counseling or mentoring, we should be concerned for the next generation, the continuance of the human race, not only as a human race, but for the next generation that's going to be here after we're gone. So now I'm about to get into some touchy subjects. The Lord did not entrust women with priestly and hierarchical ministry. The entire church hierarchy is made up of women. However, however, women are not just assistants 
to the men in the structure of the body. Since the beginning, men, women, uh, women served and still serve Christ directly. We're going to talk about one of those women who was so honored as to even be called equal to an apostle. So just because we don't have the priesthood, like I, I was actually, I was going to have a whole section about this. I was like, you know what? Instead of focusing on this one issue that everybody is always talking about, let's focus on something else. Let, let's, let's, let's focus on something that gives a woman her value in the church. Listen to this quote. Orthodox women rejoice in the fact that the most perfect expression of Christian life and the very image of the church is a woman, the Theotokos, the mother of God. Not a priest, not a bishop, not a pope, but a woman, the mother of God. The most pure woman who had the honor to carry the divine one. She is the expression of Christian life and the very image of the church. So if nothing else, if nothing else, take honor and take pride in the fact that you can serve the Lord because of the honor that was given to St. Mary, the virgin, the Theotokos, the mother of God. So I have a question. Could God have sent Jesus on earth a different way? What do you say, yes or no? Yes, absolutely. He absolutely could have sent Jesus a different way. But St. Mary became the honor of all women through this grace that God gave her. Okay, I'm going to close with this. One of the most important roles that us as women have is to encourage other women. I'm, I'm just going to say that one more time. The most important role we have as women is to encourage other women. I don't understand the, the, the silent competition that we have be, as women. Like, we, we have this competition in our minds. Like, she's prettier than me. She's a better mom than me. She does her job better than me. And, and it's a, it's a, sometimes it's not so silent, but most of the time it's silent. And we have this competition that we need to one-up each other or I need to be a better wife. I need to be a better... I mean, that's great, but most of the time it's not in a healthy way. Girls compete against each other, but women empower each other. Are you empowering another woman to use her talents to serve in the church? Are you allowing yourself to be empowered by another woman to go forward? Can you imagine a church where every single member of the church, let's not say every single member, let's say most of the members in the church is a part of some ministry. Can you imagine what that church would look like? We pray in the Lord's Prayer. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Why do we say this? We want his kingdom to come on earth. Imagine if we all serve in the church, male and female. Imagine what, what a small kingdom we would have, what a small kingdom we would witness here on earth. This is for everyone. Our goals together as Orthodox men and women are to make society as much as possible an image of the divine. 
This goes hand in hand with our first core value here at St. Mark. We exist to bring the fullness of life found in Jesus Christ to everyone. That's the reason why we exist. Whether you're male or female, whatever your financial status is, whatever your gender is, whatever your ethnicity is, it doesn't matter. We all exist to make our society an image of the divine and to bring the fullness of life found in Jesus Christ to everyone. So I hope we can understand what our roles are. I hope we can keep those roles with pride, with honor, whether you're male or female. And I pray that for the next couple of weeks, we can continue to uncover some misunderstandings that might have happened over the years to get us to the point where we're a little bit confused as to where the church stands um, concerning women and, and their roles and where they, where they stand in the church. Okay, let's stand up to pray. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. We thank you, O oh Lord, so much for creating us, for creating us men and women, for creating us with our talents, for creating us with our abilities, for creating us with our own unique purposes, roles, and functions. Help us see that we are all part of your body and that we are all working together to add to your kingdom, to bring those who are hungry to see who their heavenly father is, who are hungry for love, who are hungry to see who created them. We ask you to please continue to help us to keep our roles, to teach our children that they have a place in the church, that they are the next generation that will sustain the church after we are gone. We pray all these things through the intercession of your Holy Mother, the Theotokos. We pray through the intercession of Saint Mark, the beholder of God and all your saints. Hear us as we pray together thankfully, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. In Christ Jesus our Lord, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.